my beautiful, devoted, virtual artist. Uh, welcome to week one of The Great Outdoors. Da, da, da. Um, this week, your first week, I have two little projects for you. Um, one is a painting um, about the making a painting of the Northern Lights. And the second one is a draw along woodpecker. So back to the Northern Lights, which are this amazing, beautiful thing that happens in the sky that you have to be away from any city to see. Um, for this, I'm hoping that you have some watercolors. If you don't, I have another solution for you. But um, this is my example. And you'll need paper, any kind of paper. This is a bit of a thicker printer type paper, copier paper that I just had lying around. Uh, watercolor, any kinds of watercolors that you might have. Um, and brush, obviously for your watercolor and some salt and another paper. You can even just use the same paper. Black is the preferred color because then you immediately have a sort of silhouette of the tree line. But I didn't. I scraped around and I happened to find um, a bunch of purple tissue paper that I painted some of my black watercolor onto for my tree effect. So with this painting, something I want you to notice is how I've made my brush strokes, that they aren't just straight lines across. And that's because when you watch the videos about the Northern Lights and look at the Northern Lights, there's sort of this moving, swirling, dynamic thing that happens in the sky. Um, what you can do with your watercolor, and I would love for you to experiment with this, is as you paint, and I'm, you can paint with big strokes and see what happens when you mix your paint right on the page. So yellow onto the green, green on the yellow. I use a lot of green and yellow because you're gonna you'll you'll understand why after you watch the video. But you don't have to restrict yourself to those colors. And as I paint, kind of filling the page all the way up. Okay. You may end up with lots of white space. So when you're finished with all your color, I want you to take your black and fill in all the white space. And you'll see when you see the little videos of the Northern Lights, and maybe some of you have actually seen them. That would be cool. Um, you can still see the, see the darkness of the space beyond the amazing lights that are moving around in this sort of wave type motion. All right, while this is wet, you're gonna take a little bit of salt and you can skip the stuff if you don't have salt or if you end up not having time, have to run out in an emergency or something and your painting's not wet anymore when you get back to it. Although you can always re-wet it when you come back. But you're gonna just sprinkle a little bit of salt and Depending on what kind of paper you use, you will get different effects with the salt. But the salt, like it does with the snow, it kind of disperses the pigment and the color. So with snow, with the snow and ice salt melts it. It's kind of the same effect. Um, this paper is a little flimsier than my harder copier paper. So the salt will take differently to it. You have an amazing watercolor type paper, that's even better, but I don't expect you guys to have all that. Um, if you do not have watercolor, that's okay. If you scrape around, I bet you in drawers and stuff, you might find, like I did, a bunch of random markers. 
You don't even have to have a good set. And the interesting thing is you can actually draw with the marker and if you just add some water on top of it, it will act like a fluid paint. So don't fear if you don't have watercolor, you don't have to run out and get them. You will also need glue because after you make your painting, let it dry a little bit, you're gonna wanna, I had to tear, cause I use tissue paper, out these sort of like organic type tree line shapes. Cause I notice like at night, if I look at the tree line, it's hard sometimes to distinguish trees. It just sort of looks like these big giant masses of, I don't know, blobs. But, walls. walls, yeah, something. I could have taken, I guess, some time to have tried to cut, rip tear, something more triangular, like um, the pine trees I might see. But if you have regular paper, you can draw shapes and cut them out and glue down. I found a glue stick. Any type of glue works. Um, just anything to kind of put down your tree line or trees there. So that's the Northern Light painting you're gonna make. And they're so pretty. And I did do this project with my in-class students and they loved it. And I will post some examples that they made because they're pretty inspiring. They use larger sheets of paper. So if you have a bigger sheet, go for it. Uh, second, and I, there will be again, two videos, uh, short ones um, in relation to this. So you get to learn a little bit about the Northern Lights, why they happen and um, also just some time-lapse photography of them occurring. Second is just a draw along woodpecker. The affiliated, affiliated, I never say it right, but the big woodpecker. I did my draw along. I did not have um, a camera person, so I had an awkward sort of setup. So I ended up pushing him all the way to the right. Then I made a cool land, not really that cool, I'm sure you can make a cooler one, but a landscape in the background. Um, you can choose to start your woodpecker on a different, you know, over to the left more, or you can even keep it this way so you have more room for a background. But there's just a little um, simple shape draw along post for you as well. Um, all right, so one more thing I thought of for this. Also, you can do yours vertical up and down or you can do your northern lights horizontal this way and have a longer tree line. So I forgot, just wanted to mention that. Um, all right, I think that is about it. And I um, want you guys to have a great time. Please upload in the assignments anything that you do, or you can always just email me directly. I'm really excited for you guys um, to get to work and have fun with this. And I can't wait to see what you come up with.